What's up, everybody? Welcome to This Week in MLS, presented by Target. Kaylin Carr, we're back. We are. It feels good to be back at this desk, doesn't it? I mean, two it's weeks. Been a while. That is too long. It's been a minute. Let's go. I Let's know. get this I playoffs ready, back going. I am ready for some soccer. Also, you got a little haircut, I noticed. Uh, yeah, thank like you. Like a different person. Ooh. Wasn't expecting that. Looking yeah. Good. Thank you. Looking good. Yeah. Looking fresh. Let me know if anything fresh comes out of place. Yeah. I will. I definitely will. I'm here for you. Um, okay. So let's let's talk a little. We're going to do things a little differently today, since there really isn't a, a ton to talk about in the way of games, since there hasn't been any. We were on a nice little international break. So we're going to do a little conference championship preview, and this is how we're going to do it. We're going to pick a team, you and I each. Mm. I'll take the East. You take the West, and we're going to make a case as to why they are going to be the ones that are going to go to Cup. Okay. Got it? I think I can handle that. You think you, you can? I think I can handle that. Ready for this but challenge? But you get first pick? Obviously. Okay. I'm the lady. All right, and we're going to start in the... Uh, we're going to start in the east. In the east. Okay. okay. Start us off. So, so obviously, we've got the Columbus crew um, hosting TFC in the first leg of this conference championship. Clearly, we can make a case for both sides winning this. I mean, TFC has been the favorite team all season long. Columbus, just the hot team of the moment, riding the wave. Uh, but I, I like a good underdog story. I sure do. And so I am going to make the case for Columbus Crew. I just think that we have talked about momentum in the playoffs and how important it is. We saw what happened with Seattle last year. You know, they just sort of rode that that hot hand um, all the way to the final, end up winning it. I just, I have this, this gut feeling about Columbus and especially with everything that has been going on with this team off the field. Um, it just, it just almost feels like this could be could be their moment. They're playing really, really well. They are coached so well. I love what Greg Berhalter does with this team. You've got Iguain just manning that midfield, having a stellar season for them. Um, I think an X factor for this team is going to be Zach Steffen. I think that that guy has been playing out of his mind. I don't know. I think there's going to be an interesting matchup between Iguain and Bradley in the midfield. Also, we have to take into account that they have are unbeaten at home in their last eight matches. They are hosting the first game. TFC, no Josie. No Javinko. Jeez. I just, I don't know. So this I is going to be a blowout. No, They're just going to run Certainly away with it? Not a blowout. Not a blowout. But I think that there is enough there. I think that they can make a big enough statement in that first leg to uh, to put the pressure on TFC. And it's it, it's just going to fall their way. You know what the funny thing about momentum is? Mm. Sometimes it comes to a screeching Ooh. halt. Uh, I, you know, I think the one thing that you do find from a two-week break here is it favors the higher seeds mm -hmm. because a team like Columbus that's been playing you know so many games from the knockout round all the way through uh, those first three matches now they come up and they realize oh you got a long two weeks and I've played in these uh, playoffs where you end up sitting there and you're you know going back to training for two weeks and these days stretch out to be long now there's a good environment a good a good mood in the group and guys will be able to lick some of their wounds but I think this favors the higher seeds. And right here, it's obviously Toronto FC in this one. They've been the deepest team all season mm -hmm. long. Uh, when they've needed guys to step up, when guys have gone down either through injury, rest, suspension, uh, they found a way to be able to do it. And the guy to watch in this one is Toast St. Ricketts. Uh, he, he's, he's a guy who's going to be stepping in, obviously, in place of Josie Altidore up front. Mm -hmm. But this guy is not just... Uh, a backup in the in a normal sense of the world, word. I mean, he's a guy I think could start for most MLS clubs. Came back to Toronto FC with something to prove this uh, last season. Was such a big part of their playoff run last year. Of course, scoring a huge goal in that um, Montreal series. Yes. And has done it throughout the season, too. He's had multiple multi-goal games. Right. Has played well against Columbus. Yeah, so he's the guy I want to watch in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I actually do like Columbus in the first leg, mm -hmm. just because of those reasons you mentioned. But I think uh, Toast St. Ricketts may get an important away goal and, and make the second leg. Uh, a lot to play for. So this is gonna, it's going to be so fun. Yeah, it's going to be a sellout crowd there. I just think the the whole environment is going to be ridiculous. It's going to yes. be going to be another lit, X factor, as the kids say. Visker, Victor Vasquez. Visker, Vic, Visker? Now Visker? I'm saying it. Victor Vasquez, who has been absolutely outstanding for TFC, has to be said. Um, yeah, that's going to be that's going to be a fun a fun midfield yeah. to watch. Victor's not a hard word to say. Victor, it's what not is a hard wrong name. with it? You guys, we're off our game a little yeah, bit. Here we forgive go. us, forgive us. Um, okay, so let's take it. Let's take it out west. Okay. Shall we? Let's do it. Kaylin, give me. Oh. 
Give me who's gonna who's gonna go to Cup. Well, I just got back from Seattle. You sure did. <laughs> so I was out in Seattle filming a, a new episode of the Movement, uh, but. In the meantime, obviously they're playing. I didn't realize it till I got out there, but uh, or I didn't really think it through. But I'm tweeting, hang out with Christian Roldan, and now Houston fans are on me <laughs> back in Houston. So uh -oh. here we I go. gotta be careful here, here go. in this one because I'm going back to Seattle and Houston. Uh, but I think I'm gonna take Houston for okay. the sake of argument in this one. Okay. Um, and because they're at home, they've mm -hmm. been strong at home. Uh, Cabrera has these guys going. Now, they're going to need to play, I think, a physical match. I think they're going to try and make it a little bit rough. But, uh, you know, Schmetzer and those guys, they know how to play that type of match as well. I was going to say, how much does experience come into this, too? You know, you've got Seattle, who have been there. They know what it is. No, they're the defending like. champs. Like, they, this is. And for a reason, yes. you know. And now they, they have Clint Dempsey back this season, of course. No, no Jordan Morris, although uh, maybe there is a hope for him. I, I made, I did see him in some cleats oh, out there. Oh, uh, breaking, not, not doing are you a lot. News right now? <laughs> but, uh, but I think, you know, the, the two week break will actually favor Seattle mm -hmm. in the sense of like having some time for those guys to rest a bit. Houston also has a lot to deal with, with Kyoto and Elise going yeah. down to uh, Australia. Um, that's, and, a, that's a long trip. That's a long haul. Yeah, and uh, being disappointed uh, not qualifying for the World exactly. Cup next summer. So they're going to have to bounce back and put a lot into this one. Uh, I think it's going to be a tight game. I don't think there's going to be a lot of goals in this first leg, but I think Houston, they had only 12 shots last game. Eight of them were on goal. They mm -hmm. end up with two goals. So being efficient with their chances is how they're going to get by uh, in this series. I had well, I had listened to something Stephen Keel had said, too, about the importance for Seattle to come out strong in the second half because that is when they can sometimes are susceptible to, to goals, and so they have to really, really put up a strong front. So who knows if Houston can capitalize on on that you never know. Yeah. I mean these are this is the playoffs you guys. Anything can happen. <laughs> this is exciting. I don't disagree with Stephen Keel ever. Why would you? That guy took a red card for me in men's league recently. Oh. Yeah. Team player. I had my back. Team player. Yeah. Team player. Um speaking of, of team player, What's I'm that? gonna let you do the honors. Okay, here we go. For did you see that? Did you see that? Is it so ah. good? Because it's so, so good. I've missed him. Feels nice, yeah. I've just missed him. I've missed him so much. Um, okay, so the did you see that that I am going to uh, elaborate on is the Caleb Porter news. So after five years in Portland, Caleb Porter will not be returning as head coach of the Portland Timbers. And I will be completely honest, totally surprised me when I saw this news. I really, really did not see this coming. They obviously, they were top of the West. They have one cup in his tenure. Um, he's done a tremendous job with that team. You know, the entire time that he's been coaching, you know, they, they had some wobbles, but this was never a team that you thought was, you know, in, in peril. Um, so it's an interesting move. Um, it, they've, the way his statement was was framed, it led you to believe that this was his choice, that he was looking to, to move on. Of course, we have no idea what these conversations are like, what is happening behind closed doors. But two questions for you. What's next for Caleb Porter, and where does Portland go from here? What direction do they go in? Well, I can tell you I was in Seattle, and everybody there was very happy about this news. <laughs> I'm sure they were. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure. I was at the University of Washington in Seattle U game, and there were a bunch of Sounders fans there, and they were all like, Nice. Like yeah. we don't have to worry about him anymore because Portland has been, uh, you know, consistently a contender under yeah. his reign. Uh, I think he's a, such a talented coach. Um, I think the way he's been able to get his teams to play uh, an attacking, good style of soccer, um, but also a, a tough teams that can get it done in the playoffs. Not always just the the beautiful game. And mm -hmm. uh, it was a surprise to hear. You never know if there were some uh, things going on behind closed doors. You never know if people are always on the same page as far as the direction for, uh, uh, you know, following years. But right. I think he's a guy that's obviously going to get a, a, a lot of good opportunities. But now this Portland job is is wide open. I think they may look to go uh, potentially abroad with, uh -huh. with the hiring. Um, you're seeing a lot of uh, that happening across the league. It's a big job. I think they can attract coaches from abroad. So that's where I'd be looking. Absolutely. It's going to be really interesting. They've yeah. got such a huge amount of talent on that Absolutely. team. So I would think that this is going to be a very appealing, yeah. appealing position for yes. some coach out there that is hungry. Um, gosh, this is... This is it. Are you going to take the job? I'm, should I? Are you announcing your candidacy? I would like Everyone's to put running my for name U.S. Forward. soccer presidency, so Susanna for Portland. Thank you. I th I, why not? All right, here we go.
Next Did one up. You see that? Uh, mine's just a little bit more silly. Yours is like heartbreaking news, but that's okay sometimes. Uh, this, is, this is just that's how it goes. Here we are. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I did. I, mine's a picture of uh, Roger Levesque, uh, <laughs> old buddy of mine who showed up in a space suit. I don't. I, I'm so. I'm puzzled, but I. I celebrate this. Yeah. I think this is, this well, is if wonderful. You know, if you know Raj, you know this is just sort of standard heat cereal in costume. So, so uh, shows up and uh, had the coolest moon boots ever. He said Portland has flannel uh -huh. and Seattle has space suits. Okay. Yeah. I'm down with he that. He just is always taking opportunities to troll Moon boots are uh, so Timbers comfortable, fans. Yeah. you guys, especially dealing with these New York winters. Might have a pair myself. I like that. Just saying. Yeah. Just saying. Um, you guys, we are going to be here ahead of the games on Tuesday night. We're going to be doing our MLS Playoff Central presented by Audi. Yes. I'm hosting. You're you gonna are? Be on I the thought panel. I was. A, okay. No. I'll be an analyst. I'm. You're okay. gonna. You're, we're gonna get all your nuggets of wisdom. Okay. Got it's it. gonna be really, really good. So you I'll guys should tune into that. I believe that's going to kick off at 7:30 Eastern on MLSsoccer.com. Also, the games are page. back. The games are Let's back. Let's go. We're gonna be doing it again after. The final whistle after the games end, so join us there. We and should do a bracket just because I feel like we've got a better chance now. I would probably do. <laughs> <laughs> don't even don't even talk about our bracket. Okay. It's not fun. It's yeah. not fun. But guys, soccer is back. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys real soon. Join us tomorrow night. Yes, please do.